Um, so my name is Edgar May. Um, I did my PhD in Amsterdam and computer science information retrieval, actually. Then spent a little time at Yahoo Labs in, in lovely sunny Barcelona, which is great. Um, and then made my way to, um, to London, where I'm now at Bloomberg, um, leading a bunch of teams, um, doing question answering. So I'm a very big fan of question answering, actually. Um, we do knowledge graphs, we do search, we do clustering and summarization. And really, the purpose of this talk is really to give you an idea of the kind of things that we are doing, uh, in, both in London and also, of course, in New York. Um, before I start, just a show of hands, who here knows the name Bloomberg? Okay, who here thinks that Bloomberg is a bank? Good. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Um, we're very much an information providing company, right? We have a, a big newsroom, and that's also where you might know us from. Uh, of course, everyone knows Mike Bloomberg, uh, who is like the, uh, the, the, one of the founders of the company. Um, but our biggest product actually is the, is the Bloomberg terminal. So I'm not sure if you've ever seen like a trader uh, on, the, on a trading floor, like in a movie, you see something that looks a bit like this. But these guys are like six up displays um, and more often than not, you'll see a Bloomberg terminal uh, running there. So that's our product. Um, it's a subscription based product. So you pay a lot of money every month to be able to use that thing. Um, and what we aim to do there is to provide um, functionalities to financial professionals, right? So pension fund managers, for instance, or big hedge funds and so on and so forth. Um, we basically have four pillars. One of them is data. So we aim to provide data uh, along the lines of like, I don't know, ask prices, bid prices, market, market data, supply chains, and so on. Analytics on top uh, for our clients, of course. Uh, we do a lot of news. This may not be a surprise. We have uh, thousands of journalists employed like all over the world. They produce news. We also ingest a lot of news, a lot of wires, including like Twitter and so on. Um, and the final leg is, um, is community. By this, I mean like we have an email client in there, but also an instant messaging client. And I'll be touching on all these things later on uh, in my presentation. Um, I'm going to skip over this one because we all know this. Um, so to give you a sense of scale, this is only talking about news at Bloomberg. So that means like the whole news ecosystem where we produce news and also ingest news. Um, like I said, we have subscribers. So we have about more than 300,000 customers. People use the terminal. Um, and they are able to search, like we index about 500 news stories per second, right? From news uh, wires like, I don't know, Dow Jones, like New York Times, Wall Street Journal and so on. Uh, and of course also tweets. Um, we care a lot about latency, as you will see later on. Like if we extract certain things, like we have a whole pipeline to extract entities, for instance, to do entity linking, uh, as was discussed before. Um, but typically, as you see in the top right, we want to make these stories available for search in about 100 milliseconds, which is not a lot of time to do all these things, uh, as you can imagine. Um, just to give you an idea of why we care about latency, so what you see here is the stock price over time for a big American investment bank. The, the scale on the x-axis is like minutes, uh, give or take, so it's like 10, 20 minutes in there. The SEC at some point, and SEC is like the American watchdog for like securities and exchanges and so on, they announced that they would investigate this company at some point. Bloomberg picked it up, we pushed it out on the wire, and people started picking this up, and people started trading, right? Because they felt uh, there was bad news coming, so they wanted to, uh, to get rid um, of their position, that is called, uh, of, of their stocks, basically. Then shortly after, the New York Times broke the story, uh, and within a matter of like minutes, this whole stock plummeted by like 10%. So of course, if you're an investor, you want to ride this wave um, early. We do some derived things also on, on, on news stories. Of course, we do trending topics. So what we do here is a bit, a bit of clustering. We do abstractive summarization. If you're interested in these sort of things, I don't really have much time to go into much details, but grab me afterwards, uh, and I'm happy to, to say a bit more about what we do. We do sentiment analysis, of course. So this is not consumer sentiment like you know it maybe, but like what we do here is uh, what we call financial sentiment. So the idea here is you're an investor. Imagine that you see this piece of news. Would that make you invest more in this company or like would it make you stay neutral or the same actually, or would it make you go short as cold? Would you make a bet on the company's stock price going down in the future? Um, so we create annotations to that effect. We have some specialized deep learning based machine learning models to actually do this kind of annotation. Um, and then we push it out in the terminal. So all these things are screenshots actually from the uh, Bloomberg terminal. Um, I mentioned Twitter before. We're doing just a Twitter fire hose also. I'm not sure if anyone here remembers this disaster in the White House where uh, Barack Obama was injured. I hope no one does because it didn't actually happen. Um, what did happen was the Associated Press account got hacked and someone pushed out that tweet. What you see on the right-hand side is the um, aggregated value of the S&P 500 index. So that's an index of the, the I don't know, the largest uh, companies in the U.S. 
Um, and as you can see from the small, well, big dip, actually, uh, about $136 billion was wiped out uh, in a matter of minutes. It quickly recovered when it sort of uh, was surfaced that this was like a fake news. Um, but still, people do jump uh, on these kinds of messages. Um, I mentioned knowledge graphs, I mentioned entities, I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that we don't strictly only use the knowledge graph, for instance, to do named entity and word sense disambiguation, as was discussed earlier. We also use it for question answering, and we also use it to create narratives, to create stories. So the thing here on the left-hand side is an automatically generated story, um, actually a piece of narrative that gives you a summary of things that are happening right now with respect to this particular company, Starbucks in this case. Um, we even take that a bit further recently. So on the left-hand side, you see an automated news story. We have a number of these. These are based on various triggers, as we call them. So imagine, for instance, a stock price of a company going up or down by like a number of standard deviations. We will then pull in information from all over, from different backend systems, and we glue those signals together into well, a completely automated, uh, automated news story. These ones are based on uh, what are called economic indicators. So these are things like employment rates and so on, uh, retail sales. Um, and this one actually predicted Starbucks uh, stock price going down um, a little while later. Again, I can give you more details in person. This is to give you a, a taster. Other kinds of documents beyond news that we leverage, that we use, are things like company filings. Uh, in, in the US, you, as a company, probably traded company, you need to submit these filings, these documents, to the same SEC as I mentioned before, every quarter and every year. The point here is that there's specific, these things need to have a specific structure and specific contents. So you'll find that the structure is the same, but the actual content of individual headings uh, can be very different. So there really, we face some challenges there to extract pieces of information automatically from these things uh, at scale, at low latency again. Um, why do we care about this? Well, um, again, like if you are a client of ours, right, you want to get access to this sort of information very quickly. Historically, we've been doing these kind of things manually, like human beings would look at this PDF, extract a value, put it in a database or an Excel something, which would then float up into the terminal, but increasingly we're doing these things automatically. Um, and again, here we want to have low latency and super high precision. So we rather drop something on the floor and give it to a human being than provide an erroneous value. So there's an interesting kind of spiel that we have here. I mentioned question answering. It's, to be completely honest, more semantic parsing right now than actual question answering, but we're getting there. Um, so here you'll see the results. We have an internal search function uh, within the terminal. So I searched here for Chinese companies that had dividend yield over 5% five, five last year. If you don't know what that means, I don't know that either. The point is that we transform this into an intermediate recitation, uh, and we translate that into a backend sort of database query, if you will. Um, which would then service the results. So usually you would get like a SERP uh, on, on this particular screen with some results, and now you actually get like what we call uh, special answers. Uh, I have another example. If you type FB, Facebook, versus Google Revenue, uh, you get a chart based results. We do maps, we do all sorts of other kinds of backend uh, queries here also. Um, the final thing, the last thing that I mentioned earlier on is communications piece. So you remember this particular uh, graph that I just shown you. What is happening at the back end, in, in, in sort of the background, is traders, customers of ours, they're training with each other, right? They see this happening and they send instant messages to each other, each other like, do you see this happening? I want, to, I want to sell this particular stock based on this particular piece of information for this amount of money. So what we do is we also listen in on those, uh, what we call IB chats, instant Bloomberg. Um, so what we do there, of course, we need to detect these entities, like securities, what are people talking about? But of course, we also need to detect the intent. What are people wanting to do with these things, right? Do they want to buy? Do they want to sell? Do they want to something else? Um, an interesting challenge here also is to do the dialogue extraction. By this, I mean, like, if you have, imagine a big chat room with about 100 people in there. Um, there will be various conversations happening at the same time. So we need to disentangle those particular threads, um, what people, which people are saying what to whom uh, and in which thread. Um, again, we do all this automatically. Um, when people do make a trade, like you see happening here, and people accept, then we actually also execute the trade. And of course, we get a small commission for doing so, which is the reason for our doing this in the first place, I suppose. Finally, we do a, a bit of outreach. We still publish papers. I'm actually also co-organizing a workshop on bias in automated knowledge graph construction, which I think you might find interesting. Um, we have an internal machine learning course uh, that we also made open source recently. Um, I'm pretty sure this is not very relevant for anyone here in the room. Uh, but if you want to take a look, uh, it's Foundations of Machine Learning. It's all on YouTube. Um, we have data science fellowships. So we sponsor PhD students uh, throughout their 
trajectory basically with the only um, compulsory thing in there is that you come and do an internship with us which is not necessarily a bad thing because we still like to write papers and publish about those things. Um, the data science research grants is a similar setup but then for, uh, for tenure track um, staff at, at university so assistant professor is enough. Um, this program was so popular last year that we may need to overhaul it because there just simply wasn't enough money to like it was becoming a bit unfair to have so many people apply and only so many like uh, such a finite amount of grants to hand out. Um, so that might change in the future, but have a look if you're interested. Um, and of course, yeah, we are uh, we are always hiring. So come and talk to me if you are interested in the kind of things that we do. And that's my Twitter handle. Thanks. Thank you.